So try to draw any bone. So for this question, supposedly you're able to actually submit a drawing. Okay, so what we saw are a lot of bones kind of like this, like what we see are a lot what we think of with, oh, I like the smiley face, the little doggy bones, right? So we see a lot of that bone. So when you ask someone to draw a bone, this is pretty much what they typically draw, right? Something like that. Now, back to our presentation. So yeah, as you saw, a lot of people drew this type of bone. And yeah, that is like what we think of when we think of bones. But the thing is that, is that anatomically correct? Well, like, is this, our bones are in a body like this. Do we just have bones like this in our body? Is that the only type of bone? Again, we saw a clavicle, we saw other types of bones. So yeah, we don't just have bones that are doggy bones in our body. We have a full skeleton in our body. Now, the thing is that, again, this is a typical thing when we see the dog toys and dog bones, we see something like this. So, but things that our bones completely symmetrical on both ends. Yeah, they have an epiphysis on both ends. Uh, but things that, notice that I, this isn't a human bone, by the way, it's probably like some beef bone. Notice it's very meaty here and very huge and not symmetrical over here. But yeah, bones are not symmetrical. This cartoon bones, uh, it's simple to draw. That's why we draw that type of bone. But bones are not like that. But what it's referring to is an overall long bone shape. So again, you have a shaft that's very skinny compared to the ends that are a little more bulbous and lumpy. So yeah, here's a femur, for example. As you notice that this head right here is not the same as the distal head here. It does have a long shaft, but the thing, and it does have bulbous ends, but it's not symmetrical on both ends. And this is the thing with your long bones. And also these long bones as well. Notice that they're very long, they have those like narrow in the middle, but very lumpy on the ends. So this is the overall shape when we talk about long bones. Narrow shaft and then these lumpy ends. And even these parts in your, like the bones in your feet that make up the, so the metatarsals and, the, or, and also your phalanges over here. Again, they look like squished dog bones, but they're not completely symmetrical on both ends. So again, these are all long bones. Even these ones that are stubby, they're technically long bones, the ones in your feet and also the ones that make up your phalanges and metacarpals in your hand. Now, then we have short bones. So still on the feet, but now these bones over here, these are short bones and instead of being very longer than they are wide, they're kind of like, I like to say they're kind of like lumpy rocks. Like they're not very, they're not stretched out in either dimension. So things like these are the tarsal bones in your foot and these are your carpal bones in your wrist. So things that you might have felt like if you heard your like in old times, they say rolling the bones. And actually, I think in archaeology, so you have like ancient bones that are dice that are made from bones. So as you can see here, you can see all those little perforations from those like osteons and all the cancellous bones. So yeah, they when they say rolling the bones, that's because they used to make dice out of bones. And you can see that kind of, or sometimes they make it out of ivory too. But yeah, that's where these, that type of bones they used to make. Because they're kind of cuboidal and lumpy and not really elongated, they used to make bone dice out of these. And then you have flat bones. So flat bones include things like your sternum, scapula, even technically your ribs. So flat bones include those intramembranous bones we talked about in the last lecture. But it's not necessarily all intramembranous bones are, or not all flat bones are intramembranous bones. So the flat bones, I know you might be thinking like, well, my head isn't flat. It's not a cuboidal shape, but it's referring to just like they're broad. And if you look at their overall thickness, not they're more broad than they are thick. That's what they mean by flat bones. So the ones that form your cranium that house your brain, and your scapula. So these aren't actually formed through intramembranous bones. So don't think there are not, yeah, intramembranous ossification. So don't think that they're one and the same with flat equals intramembranous. It includes the intramembranous bones, but not all flat bones are intramembranous ossification bones. And then sesamoid bones. So sesamoid looks like what the first five letters said. So sesamoid refers to that they're sesame seed shape. And again, if you don't know what sesame seed looks, is like order a burger bun or something or just get, get a pack of sesame seeds. So notice that kind of like rounded, but they have a little point to them. So that's what it's referring to when they use sesamoid bones. And this is your kneecap, your patella, or more specifically the front part, the anterior part of surface of your patella. 
And this is the largest sesamoid bone in your body. Most people have that. In rare cases, some people are born without that, but that's like a rare genetic, um, that's a rare developmental defect. And actually it's very interesting. So what are these numbers referring to? So things that's, it's referring to the percentage of the population overall that has a sesamoid bone in these joints. So as you can see, it's very rare that someone has a sesamoid bone right here. But sometimes you find sesamoid bone, very, very tiny bones, nowhere near as big as your patella, sometimes in the knuckles of your hands and sometimes in, in your feet too. So sesamoid bones, them, yeah, most people have a patella, but the ones in your fingers and digits, yeah, those are not, sometimes they, some are more common. Like it says like over half people have a sesamoid bone here, but it can be very rare. Or even here you have sesamoid bone as well. Now, this is another thing. Now, this isn't in the open stacks version, at least with when it's talking about bone grouping and classification. But sutural bones, aka wormian bones, these are this these are mentioned in the Martini version of the book. So here's a suture. We'll get to that may hopefully by the end of this lecture, but if not, then in the next lecture. So sutures join some of your skull bones together. And the thing is that. These sutures, again, they're kind of like the sutures, like if you had a really bad um, injury that can't be just covered with a Band-Aid, the doctor might in do those sutures to stitch you back up. So it's kind of like that. It's kind of stitching these bones together. So this is a typical suture, but what happens is sometimes the sutures typically run across the length and join these skull bones together. But once in a while, it doesn't form just like a, this jagged line. Sometimes it forms a little ring and the little circular parts. So these are actually little extra bones, and these are what we call sutural bones, aka wormian bones. And just like sesamoid bones, not everybody has these. There, most people don't have these, but it's not uncommon. It's like if a radiologist sees a sutural bone, they're like, oh, interesting, this person has it. But it's kind of like, so it's uncommon, but it's not totally unheard of. And then you have irregular bones. So irregular bones, this is where anatomists were like, okay, we came out, we stopped talk, thinking about all these crazy categories. These we can't really think of any category for. So things like a lot of your bones in your face, their facial bones in your skull, they, they fall on the irregular. This is the ethmoid bone. And so this is interesting. I've seen online resources, like I, even like, Wikipedia, and I know Wiki, don't trust everything they say, but they classify 